Hi everyone. Well, I am back and we are going to talk about after my second daughter was born and the beginning to the end of my marriage um, and how I found out about the affair and then we'll stop right there and I will pick up about the responses and everything else and how he responded and acted after I found out um, but what it came down to was after the birth of my second daughter um, we were fighting a lot and I noticed that he wasn't home as much and he was finding reasons to leave and he was finding reasons to go to Walmart all the time just little petty stuff and to go to Walmart to get some dog food he'd be gone for three hours like who, who doesn't take no one three hours um, and so or he would be working a job and I would try to call him and he wouldn't answer his phone and when he finally called me back he would tell me he was sleeping or just excuse after excuse after excuse and I remember begging him to um, work on our marriage and telling him you know we have two beautiful kids and I don't feel like he really wants this marriage anymore and he would tell me that he did and that he loved me and he loved our kids and that he wanted this marriage and blah 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 and it was a lie legitly a lie um I went to an extra job of his um and he found out I was there because he did an extra job at um a restaurant and he got really mad that I had went there to eat which made no sense to me because I kind of felt like why does it matter that I'm at a job that serves food whether you work here or not well to find out that the girl he was cheating on me with worked there so with that being said he didn't know if she was there or not so God forbid if the mistress and the wife meet why I had his children and his ex-wife because I was best friends with his ex-wife and his son with us um, and so that turned into a big fight and I was like I don't understand why it even matters and he would tell me because that's where I work at and you don't need to be there and I'm like but you're not working so why does it matter right does that make sense okay so anyways so then I started telling him like you know you're never home anymore you don't ever want to spend time with me anymore you don't ever want to be with the kids and he would be like well we got two kids there in private school da, da, da. you know we have bills to pay stuff that we need to get so I have to work to be able to give you all this stuff that we need to survive well I did a budget and realized that there's a lot of stuff that we didn't need and there is stuff that we could do differently or whatever but he never wanted to do it he, he just never participated and um I um I left him because something just didn't feel right in my gut so I left him and um he came to my friend's house at like four in the morning begging me to come back and I mean, when I say begging, I mean begging, crying, I love you, da-da-da. And I was like, no, you don't. I know there's somebody else, and he would always tell me that it's my hormones, or it's this, or it's that. And so, um, I told him to just go away, and I had to think about it, and I would make a determination later on if I wanted to come back or not. So anyways, I ended up going back again, and um, trying to work it out with him again, and um it just it, it never happened well one night he had went to Walmart to get um, dog food and to get some movies that had just come out on DVD and he ended up sending me a text message saying meet me at the doors or I'll meet you at the doors or something like that so I ended up calling him and asking him what he's talking about well, he tried to throw one of his friends under the bus, not realizing that him and I are friends, too. And he tried to say, oh, well, he bought a gun, and he's going to meet me at Walmart and show me this gun at the door. Okay, what person's going to bring a rifle to the doors at Walmart? And this is before the open gun where you can walk around with an AK-47 and nothing would happen to you? Like, this is before that time frame. So, was no one going to walk up in Walmart with a rifle in their hand thinking everything was going to be okay, regardless of what their, possession, their profession is or not? That ain't going to be okay. Especially in plain clothes that is not gonna be okay and so I told him I'm not stupid and I know you're having an affair you need to end that affair now 
it needs to end now before you screw yourself and she ends up pregnant or you end up catching something and um he was like i'm not having an affair i don't I'm having an affair i love you dude so i believed him because i didn't have hard evidence you know what i mean and I just had my assumption and so even though I didn't physically go to the guy and say hey were you meeting my ex at the door at Walmart I wasn't gonna do that put him on blast like that because I was too nice of a person now let me get into a relationship now and let a dude try to play stupid I'll put him on blast on Facebook Instagram Instagram snapchat newspaper Craigslist I'm, I'm putting him on blast I am NOT playing this game no more but anyways <laughs> don't get me all crazy nowadays um, so beyond that, um, you know, I, I knew at that point. So to me, I had started to plan my getaway kind of thing. Well, then all of a sudden, one night we had got into this explosive fight. I mean, explosive. So he decided, well, I'm going to go commit suicide like an idiot. So he goes in the closet and he gets his gun and he starts playing with his gun like he going to shoot himself. So it got to a point where I had two kids at home. They were crying. They were scared. So I called his dad. Like I said, they live next door. Do not ever live next door to your in-laws. Big mistake. So his dad came over and um, I was packing my stuff and I was packing my kids stuff because we're going to leave. I'm done. And um, he had um, called me a whore, told me I was a piece of crap. I was worthless. Um, I just on and on and on. Um, called me a bitch more times than I've ever been called in my life to the point where that word to me just pushes a button on me and it makes me go crazy like crazy like I'm, I'm gonna knock you out crazy um and so I started to leave his brother and everybody was trying to get me to stay they told me that um it was like three o'clock in the morning my kids had school the next day um and that it wasn't right to make them leave in the middle of the morning technically when they needed to get some sleep before school and so um, they took him over to their house and he begged me and begged me and apologized, you know, said it was the alcohol cause he had been drinking and all this other bogus bull crap. Um, and so, um, we worked that out. Well then, um, come about August of 2011. No, I'm sorry. 2010. His attitude changed. He was being, he was home more often. He was wanting to spend more time with me. He was just a whole new different person. Um, and I didn't understand why. He, he wasn't being as stupid as he was, I guess. I don't know. But it's because in August of 2000, July, August time frame is when the affair ended. But at the time, I didn't know that. Um, and so... I noticed that he was spending more time at home, but at this point I was over my marriage. Like I would used to tell everybody I'm married, but I'm single. So then I would laugh and say, I'm single without the perks of being a single girl because he really never really participated. He was just home enough and he was home more often. He felt like that was good enough and that was sufficient enough and that was going to make me happy. But what he didn't realize is there's more to it than that. So we were still fighting and he was saying that I was ungrateful and that I didn't appreciate anything that he did. And I didn't because I didn't respect him and I didn't love him and I didn't care. I don't think I was ever in love with him. Um, so with that being said, on May 2nd, 2010, no, I'm sorry, May 2nd, 2011, I was going through the mail and there was a letter in the mail. And this is where I'm going to end it after I explain this to y'all. There was a letter in the mail and I threw it in the trash because I thought it was junk mail. Well, something in me told me to pull it back out where I noticed that it was from the attorney general's office for child support. So I opened it up and I saw something about child support. So my first thought was his ex-wife is going after him from her child support. And I'm like, wow, you know, me and her are really good friends. Why didn't she just talk to me and say, hey, I need more money or at least give me a heads up that she's going after him for more money. Right. OK, so at this time, I didn't know who it was. It clicked out who it was and what was going on on, on like I said, May 2nd, 2011 at 7.02 p.m. It was my mom and dad's anniversary. And um, when I looked at it, I noticed that it had her name, her son's name, but I didn't look at the possibility of who the father was. 
So I was like, okay, well, it's not his ex-wife. So I was like, well, maybe I should push this aside and call them and tell them that I accidentally opened this up. And it's not, but it's funny because it was addressed to my ex-husband. So why all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, this is the wrong person. I am, um, was kind of thrown off by it. And so I um, looked and realized that she was naming my ex-husband as the father of the child. So I called him at work and I was like, what? So we're going to stop right there at the, I called him at work. Because this part gets interesting by his attitude, his reaction. And from this point on, just everything that went down, um, we're going to stop it right here. And I will talk about his reaction the next time I blog. Um, but I feel like this video is long enough and I'm sure y'all don't want to listen to me yabber jabber no more. So with that being said, thank y'all for listening to me. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye.